Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how we can determine whether a risk factor is linked to a non-communicable disease. You should then be able to describe how sampling can be used to determine correlation. And finally, you should be able to describe what's meant by a causal mechanism. Now we've already seen that many diseases are spread from person to person by a pathogen, such as a bacterium or a virus. Scientists call these communicable diseases. However, many diseases are non-communicable. These are not spread from person to person. Instead, these are caused by risk factors, and we're looking at those in this video. A good example of a non-communicable disease is lung cancer. In the 1930s, rates of lung cancer began to increase sharply, and scientists couldn't explain this. Now, scientists could not carry out experiments on humans to try to work out what causes lung cancer. That would be unethical. So instead, scientists began to look very closely at people's lifestyle habits to see if they could link any of these with lung cancer. Studying the patterns of disease to determine risk factors is called epidemiology. Now, scientists noticed that lung cancer is much more common among cigarette smokers than among non-smokers. Scientists looked at how many cigarettes people smoked each day, and then how many of these people developed lung cancer. The scientists were looking to see if there was a correlation, in other words a link, between lung cancer and smoking. Now, in order to determine whether there's a correlation, scientists plot a scatter graph, and I'm showing that here. So as you can see, as the number of cigarettes smoked per day increases, the risk of developing lung cancer also increases. Scientists call this a positive correlation. Now, one key fact you need to remember is that a correlation such as this one does not prove cause. So this graph does not prove that cigarette smoking causes lung cancer. It simply suggests that they might be linked. Next, scientists plotted the number of years that a person smoked against the risk of developing lung cancer, and again they got a graph like this. Once again, this shows a positive correlation between smoking and the risk of developing lung cancer. Now at this stage, scientists began to look at how cigarette smoking could cause cancer. In other words, whether there was any scientific explanation how this could happen. Scientists call that a causal mechanism. They discover that cigarette smoke contains chemicals which damage DNA and increase the risk of cancer. These are called carcinogens. So now, scientists had a strong correlation between smoking cigarettes and lung cancer, and they had a causal mechanism. This means that now we accept that smoking increases the risk of lung cancer. Now, as I said before, epidemiology involves studying the patterns of disease to determine risk factors. But there's a potential problem with this, and that is sampling. Imagine that we wanted to investigate whether a disease is linked to diet. Ideally, we'd look at every single person in the population. We'd look at what they ate, and then at the chances of them developing the disease. Now, in practice, it's not possible to sample every single person. So instead, scientists sample a group of people, and then try to draw conclusions about the whole population. Now imagine that we select our sample from only one town. It's possible that this does not represent the entire population of the country. In other words, the sample's biased. So for example, people in the town might take less exercise than average, or they might be exposed to a certain type of pollution only found in that town. That means that we could not use the results to draw conclusions about the whole country. So the key points are that to avoid bias, we need to take as large a sample as possible, and it must be as random as possible. We cannot draw conclusions from a small or non-random sample. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on correlation and on sampling in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to describe how we can determine whether a risk factors linked to a disease. You should then be able to describe how sampling can be used to determine correlation, and finally, you should be able to describe what's meant by a causal mechanism.